Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, Sir, for giving me this opportunity. The issue which I am going to raise is a very important one as far as development of Lakshadweep is concerned. I need your protection and advice on this issue because it is a peculiar issue which may not be affecting other areas. There is a service in Lakshadweep which in 1995 was encadered to Danix. Earlier, Lakshadweep was not included in the Danix. But in 1995, it got included in it. The peculiar problem that we face now is that most of the officers who come to Lakshadweep from the 13 and cadre posts are freshers. So they are directly coming to join the service in Lakshadweep. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that they find it difficult to understand the peculiar issues of Lakshadweep. Secondly, most of the officers do not want to come to Lakshadweep because it is a far away place from their hometowns. Thirdly, the post of the director which is controlled by Danix is very much locally dependent. The pe local people want to go and communicate their issues with these officers. But the officers do not find it easy to understand their language. These three issues are hampering the development of Lakshadweep. When you count Lakshadweep over a 12 month period, obviously 4 months go waste because of monsoon. So basically we have 6 to 8 months and in these 6 to 8 months also it becomes very difficult for these officers to understand the issues. To pin this particular issue I raised it on several occasions in the parliamentary committees and in the recent committee meeting of which I am also a member. A proposal was also sent from the Lakshadweep administration to extend the services of Danix to the local people. The Honorable Minister of State for Home Affairs is also sitting in the house and I am happy to see him. The administration has suggested to extend the services of Danix to the local people. The problem presently being faced is that the growth of local officers who are educated and well qualified is becoming stagnant at the level of superintendent or accountant. They do not have any possibility of growing further, whereas officers in Delhi Administrative Subordinate Services cadre have a high pay and these local officers cannot reach up to that level because there is big pay disparity also. In order to have a patch up with the parity, the Lakshadweep administration has proposed a final solution that the local officers should also be encadered to Danix. My strong opinion is that the son of the soil should also get proper opportunity. I wish that my people should also dream of joining the prestigious Indian Administrative Service so that Lakshadweep can be served in a better way. This is a peculiar scenario and the Lakshadweep administration has submitted a detailed proposal to the MHA. The MHA is taking it up in a slow manner by sending unnecessary and unwanted questions to the Lakshadweep administration, which is not expected from the MHA. The Honorable Minister may kindly look into the proposal of Lakshadweep administration in a serious way. This issue should be taken up seriously so that Lakshadweep can be developed in a big way. Honorable Speaker Sir, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited is one of the Maharatna companies of our country. It gives employment to lakhs of people in the country. The BPCL has four major refineries. The most important one is situated in Cochin. The second one is in Mumbai. The third one is in Madhya Pradesh. And the fourth one is in Assam. Sir, it has assets of Rs. 8.5 lakh crore. And it is making a profit of Rs. 13,000 crore before GST. And after GST, it is making a profit of Rs. 8,000 crore. Sir, this refinery is not just producing petroleum products, but also by-products, which are used as raw material for many other companies across the country. Bitumen is one major example which provides raw material for the entire state of Kerala. Sir, 27% of the LPG cylinders is spread over 8.5 lakh crore families. There are many central government schemes which provide subsidies to the common man through LPG cylinders. There are many other products which are being processed in this country. Sir, 52 airports are being provided with aviation fuel with the help of the BPCL. There are many other factors. When the government takes steps to privatize, we should also understand the story. There is an old story of a greedy man who kills his golden goose for getting rich overnight. Unfortunately, he neither gets the golden goose nor the golden eggs. 
आई स्ट्रांगली कंडेम द डिसीजन टू प्राइवेटाइज भारत पेट्रोलियम कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड द गवर्नमेंट शुड विदड्रॉ दिस डिसीजन वेन वी टॉक अबाउट नेशनलिज्म द प्राइड ऑफ द नेशन इज बींग सोल्ड एट ए फास्ट रेट द ऑनरेबल फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज डिक्लेयर दैट द गवर्नमेंट विल कंप्लीट द प्रोसेस ऑफ सेलिंग टू आइकॉनिक इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ द इंडियन नेशन भारत पेट्रोलियम कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड एंड एयर इंडिया बिफोर मार्च नेक्स्ट ईयर The reason for selling Air India is that it runs in losses and the reason for selling BPCL is that it runs in profits the paradox apart i must point out one fact that the government is selling the family silver when it puts the BPCL on the block i understand the compulsion of the government to meet the disinvestment target failing which the fiscal deficit target will go for a toss but the government owes an explanation why it chooses to sell a maharatna company lock stock and barrel the company is one of the largest profit making companies even by the standards of the private sector companies last year it made a turnover of rupees 3.37 lakh crore and a profit of rupees 7132 crore that profit unlike the profit of huge private companies and multinationals does not go to the private individuals hands or go overseas in full measure the government of india is the direct beneficiary of the profits that bpcl makes honorable speaker sir last year alone bpcl contributed rupees 2196 crore to the government as dividend it paid rupees 30000 crore to the government in the last 10 years in today's newspaper the honorable finance minister said that the profitability has gone down but that is not correct for the last 4 years the contribution as dividend to the central government is rupees 8483 crore sir with why the government is killing the goose that lays the golden eggs i represent the place where one of the biggest expansion plans of the company is now nearing completion The BPCL has invested rupees twenty three thousand crore to make a major foray into petrochemicals. The company, in partnership with the government of Kerala, is setting up a petrochemical park, which is going to attract investments in thousands of crores of rupees. Now, after investing huge amounts and making an entry into a very profitable business, you want to sell it for a song. This is unacceptable, and the government must drop its plan to sell BPCL. The Chit Funds Act 1982 was enacted to provide for the regulation of chit funds which have conventionally satisfied the financial needs of the low income households. Chit funds provide an important source of finance and at the same time an avenue to save for small businesses and low income households in India. In a chit fund a group of individuals come together for a predetermined duration and contribute a certain sum of money by way of periodical installments at regular intervals by combining credits and savings in a single scheme people who are in need of funds and those who want to save are able to meet their requirements simultaneously but there were many concerns raised by the stakeholders and to address those concerns the government formed a key advisory group on chit funds to review the existing legal regulatory and institutional framework for chit funds and its efficacy and to suggest legal and regulatory in initiatives required for orderly growth of the sector the legislative recommendations of the kag included amendments to the chit funds act 1982 with an objective of reducing the regulatory or compliance burden of the chit funds industry on the one hand and to protect the interest of the subscribers of chit funds on the other hand the parliamentary standing committee on finance during the 16th lok sabha in its 21st report had addressed all the issues and had also recommended finalization of the legislative and administrative proposals for strengthening and streamlining of the registered chit fund sector further the set committee in its 35th report which is the action taken report has again recommended the need to quickly form up the legislative and administrative proposals for the chit fund sector today i am bringing this bill for the consideration of the house but there are some key points on the amendments to the chit funds which have been proposed if you allow me i will just take a couple of minutes to throw some light on them or if you want the members to discuss them i am open to it